deep layer package. The deep layer package has several useful functions and we'll be looking at some of the important functions to, uh, in this portion of our course. The first function is called filter and as you can expect filter allows us to filter information from an existing data frame. Right? So for example suppose you've got this NYC flights data frame. Now that has information about flights that left every month, every day. So if you want to filter the data set and say look I want only the flights that, uh, that took off in the month of January or only the flights that took off after 5 p.m. or something like that. right? So you can filter using dplyr. Now remember we were able to do this even with regular data frames by using appropriate subsetting operations but that was complicated. The syntax that dplyr provides is a lot more uh, convenient and user friendly. The second thing is called arrange which is to look at the data in a certain se or particular order that we want. Okay. Now that was not very straightforward with regular data frames. You had to do a lot of extra work to get that. Whereas here, it's very straightforward. You can say arrange it by this field or arrange it by this field and this field. This one is ascending, that one is descending. You have all the control over how to, the order in which you look at your data. The third one is called select, which is to say, look, I've got a data frame that has many columns, but I want to look at only a subset of those columns. Once again, this was something we were able to do with data frames, but with dplyr, the syntax is a lot more intuitive and uh, you know a lot more civilized, I would say, than was the case with earlier data frames. Okay, mutate is when you want to create a new column based on values in existing in one existing column or multiple existing columns. So that's what I've shown here that you're taking the information contained in these two columns and creating a new column based on some computation here. And finally, we have this function called summarize. And as you can see, what it does is it summarizes information. In this example, I've just shown that it's taking this column and just providing some sort of summary of all the information, right? So these are the five basic functions that, that we'll be looking at. And you'll see that you can achieve a lot with these functions but of course the syntax of each of these functions has uh, you know subtleties and we'll learn about all of them now. The general syntax for a dplyr function would be dplyr function name like you know filter, uh, select, arrange any of those things and then the first argument is always the name of the data frame or the table on which you are operating and then followed by certain conditions that you would supply. This is the basic syntax of all dplyr functions. And we'll look at each function now shortly. Let's look at our first dplyr function. Okay, so in this command, we are saying filter. We are using the filter dplyr function. And we've typed the function name correctly, filter. Flights, which is, as I said, the first argument has to be your data on which you're operating. So that's, that's very important. The first argument is the data frame or the table on which you're doing the operation. In this case, the filter operation. And here we are saying month equals one, day equals one. Now, obviously, uh, these are conditions that you're placing and all of these are column names that exist within the data frame or within the table. Okay, notice that we didn't have to put it within double quotes, nothing. We are just using the name of uh, one of the columns in the data frame directly okay and of course you know that earlier we saw that this data frame does indeed have columns like year month day etc and we are using that okay and notice that in the condition i'm not saying month single equals one right because you know that when you use a single equals character that's a form of an assignment operator in r studio whereas here i'm saying equality comparison that is select for me all the rows for which the month has the value one or month is equal to one. This is a comparison. In other words, we are saying for every row, compare the value of month to one. If it's equal, keep it. If it's not equal, don't worry about that row. Just let it go. Okay. So we are saying get me all the rows for which month is one and day is also one. Okay. Which means Jan all the flights that left on January 1 is what we are looking at because the months are January, uh, February, etc. 1 to uh, 12.
Okay, so that's what it is. And remember, be very careful to look, to note that you're putting a double equal sign because that is the logical comparison operator within uh, uh, within R in general. Okay. Now, when you put multiple conditions like this, right? I put one condition month is one, another condition day is one. Implicitly, what you're saying is both of those conditions have to be satisfied. In other words, there is an implicit and sitting between these two conditions. Of course, you could also add more conditions if you like. If you don't say anything, if you just put commas, that means you're saying this is true and this is true and that is true. Implicit join is and. Okay, so if you execute this command, the result of this is a filtered table or a filtered data frame. We didn't assign the value to anything. So what R Studio is going to do, R is going to do is to simply print out the results. Okay, and you'll see something like this. And sure enough, the month is one and the day is one for all the rows. Okay, so this is just a very simple example of using the filter dplyr function. As before, what I could do is just, uh, in the earlier example, we just executed the filter. We called the filter function, but we didn't assign the results to anything. So the results printed out on the screen. On the other hand, I can give the same filter command, but assign the results to a variable. This time I'm calling the variable as jan.f, which is January flights, or I could have called it jan underscore f if I wanted to follow uh, the snake case. No matter what, the filtered version of this data frame that is consisting of only uh, the flights that went on January 1, all of those rows are now stored in a data in a table called jan.f, in a data frame or a table called jan.f. Okay, but if you execute this command, then obviously, because you assigned the results to a variable, Art Studio is going to be silent. Okay, it'll just come back to the command prompt you won't see what happened. And as I had discussed before, if you want to do this as well as see the results, then you can surround it within parentheses. So notice that I have an opening parentheses and a closing parentheses extra here. So now what R Studio is going to do, R is going to do is to execute the command. In other words, store the results in this variable called jan.f, but also print out that tibble to the screen. Okay, so it's sometimes convenient when you're testing out your code, it's convenient to do it this way. Again, something I had mentioned earlier, just a caution. Note that you're using two equal to signs here, the double equals. Okay, and as I had said earlier, the double equals is the comparison operator. The single equals will give you a problem, as we can see now. Right? Suppose instead of saying double equals, I had said filter flights, comma, month equals one. Right, then... It, you're going to get an error message. Filter takes unnamed arguments. Do you need double equals, right? So this first part, we are not able to fully make sense of. But the second part says, do you need double equals, right? So it's sensing the fact that this error might have happened because uh, you put single equals instead of a double equals. Okay, that tells you exactly what you need to do. Uh, while we're talking about the comparison operator, the double equals operator, we need to be very careful about one thing. And that is that sometimes you run into glitches with comparison. Now, one would think that if you take the square root of 2 and raise it to the second power, right? This operator here is the exponentiation operator, which is to raise something to a certain power. So it took square root of 2 and then raise it to the second power, then it should obviously be equal to 2, right? Which is square root of 2, uh, the whole squared has got to be 2, right? So if you do this comparison in R, you will actually see that the result is false. The reason for this is that, after all, when you're looking at a computer, the computer performs operations with limited precision, right? It may perform operations up to the correct, up to the 14th decimal or some you know, weird thing like that, but it is still approximate, right? And we know that square root of two is, uh, you know, it's an irrational number, right? So uh, it's, it's an unending, uh, decimal number 1.414 etc continues right so when you square that again you don't exactly get two you get something that is uh, you know slightly less than two okay that is why this comparison turns out to be false right so the lesson here is that whenever you're comparing uh, 
decimal numbers, it's a good idea not to try to compare for exact equality. Sometimes it works, but there could be situations when that actually turns out to be wrong. So to solve for this, R has this uh, similar, another example would be 1 divided by 49 times 49. That should be equal to 1, but it doesn't turn out to be equal to 1. Once again, because of approximations that take place in, uh, in divisions. Okay. So the way to get around this is to use the near function. Right? To say that square root of 2 raised to the power 2 is very near to 2. Of course, if it's also equal, then near will return true. So if you do this, you'll see that this is actually turning out to be true. Similarly, for 1 by 49, near 1 by 49 times 49 is 1. That is true. Okay. So that's just something that is uh, it's a reality uh, of computer-based divisions. Right? That sometimes when you're performing real division, uh, the answers you get may not be exact and that could lead to some trouble when you do exact comparisons. The solution to that is to use the near operator, the near function to see if two values are sufficiently close. That's an important thing. Going back to logical operators, remember when we said filter, flights and then month is one, day is one, of course these are, uh, we've got two conditions. I had earlier pointed out that when you have more than one condition, implicitly it treats it that both of these conditions should be true in order for something to be included in the filtered result. That is, there is an implicit AND sitting between these two things. Okay, So that's important. Uh, but of course, there are other conditions as well. It's not as if you're only allowed to put AND conditions. You need to be able to put all other sorts of conditions. This one shows you a complete list of all the operators that you can perform. Uh, so for example, if you assume that the left circle is x and the right circle is y, okay, then uh, the expression x obviously deals only with, uh, and the shaded region represents what is the result of that expression. So if you just say x, obviously anything that belongs to the x alone will be returned. If you say y, anything that belongs to y alone is returned. Uh, but if you say x and y, that is something that belongs to both x and y, then obviously it is the intersection part uh, that's going to be part of the result. Okay? Or if you said x or y, meaning include anything that belongs to either x or y, then obviously all the points are going to be included here because uh, these points belong only to x, these points belong only to y, and these points in the middle, they belong to both x and y. Okay, so that's all fine. Uh, and uh, looking at this, it says y and not x, meaning anything that belongs to y but does not belong to x, right? So therefore, that rules out this intersection part, right? So this is the only part that belongs only to y, it doesn't belong to x. Vice versa, x and not y. This part belongs to x, but none of it belongs also to y. So that's uh, x and not y. And exclusive or basically says something that belongs to either x or y, but not to both. That's the meaning of exclusive or. So obviously it includes this part and it includes this part. Okay. So when you're doing filtering, you could use all these kinds of operations to construct the kind of result that you want.